we do have uh, an invasion driven by the cartels. We've turned back tens of thousands of migrants who try to get across the border. I um, would suggest that so-called leaders focus on solutions instead of attacks. So-called leader, well, Vice President and Border Czar Kamala Harris is tearing into Texas Governor Greg Abbott after he defied the Biden administration and took matters into his own hands to address the migrant crisis. South Carolina Congressman Nancy Mace joins us now. You heard those two sound bites there. Seems to me like Governor Greg Abbott has a solution. When Kamala Harris says, where's the solution? It's right in front of you, Kamala. Where's her solution, Congresswoman? That is the question I think every American, whether you're on the southern border or not, would like an answer to. Kamala Harris has no solution to the border, which is why she's obviously lashing out at Governor Abbott. And thank you. Thank God for Governor Abbott having some solutions, having some creative way to approach the border security issues that we're having, having millions of illegal immigrants come across the border last year alone. At least there's somebody paying attention to our border, and it's Governor Greg Abbott, because certainly it's not Vice President Kamala Harris. Certainly it's not President Joe Biden or anyone in his administration at this point. A new report, uh, a leaked report actually, finds that the U.S. is bracing for more than 160,000 unaccompanied children at the border this year. Also, there's a record number of people coming from 150 different countries across the world. The U.N. just named the U.S.-Mexico border the most dangerous border crossing in the entire world. A record number of drugs and guns also pouring into the country. Also, 50 um, people on the terror watch list uh, were apprehended trying to get into the country, which begs the question, how many people on that watch list have entered the country and we don't know about them? All of these things, Congresswoman, seem like they should be issues of bipartisan concern. Why is the border issue so partisan? It should be issues of bipartisan concern. It should be an issue or priority, number one or number two priority after inflation for the president of the United States. I've been to the border. I've seen dozens of people coming across illegally in the night that I was there uh, this year and last year. Um, it is a huge problem. Look at the fentanyl coming across the border. What is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? What are they doing about that? I just had uh, someone that attended a funeral of a young man that died of a fentanyl overdose. I mean, this is happening in our communities, every community and every state across the country. And what is the administration doing? Absolutely nothing, which is why you're going to see a giant red wave in November, why it's important to back Republicans who have solutions, Republicans like Governor Greg Abbott and others along the border and others in Congress that have solutions to this looming crisis that's getting worse and worse by the day. To another controversial issue, abortion, Joe Biden stopping his bike ride to urge women to keep Keep protesting abortion ruling as he reveals he's looking into whether he can declare it a public health emergency. Take a listen. Keep protesting um, because keep making your point. It's critically important. We can do a lot of things to accommodate the rights of women in the meantime. But fundamentally, the only thing that's going to change this is if we have a national law. Biden is getting a lot of pushback from the far left to his response. They said it didn't go far enough. So where does Joe Biden go with this? Does he cave to the far left on yet another topic, i.e. abortion? And if so, what does that look like, Congresswoman? He's caved to the far left on every single issue, but we've got to we've got to be factual here. It was Democrats when Joe Biden was vice president, Obama was president. They had an opportunity with a supermajority. They had the House, they had the Senate. They could have codified and made into law uh, Roe, but they they decided not to, and they used it as a juggernaut to fundraise for the last several years. Uh, and now we've seen AOC and others online on Twitter lying about what Roe v. Wade overturning it actually does and doesn't do. Um, and we're seeing a lot of pressure. But Biden, every single time they've asked him to turn over, he's taken that sharp left turn to the other side. And it's going to have devastating consequences for the Democrat Party in November in 22 and also in 24. Yeah, President Biden said, as Todd said, he's looking into declaring a public health emergency uh, over abortion rights. There's still a lot of questions over what that might look yeah. like. And I guess we'll be learning in the coming days exactly what that could mean, whether it's funding or something else entirely. Congress